few months ago, I installed an RC Allen Mini 6 to replace a, a mechanical attitude indicator that was on its last leg. And when I was shopping, I noticed there's not a lot of information about this unit online. It was difficult to tell what it could do and, and the settings and everything. So I've had it in for a few months now. I thought maybe I'd make a little video uh, just to show you the, the different menus and settings. There's not a lot of them. Once you get it set up, it's pretty much uh, good to go. You don't have to do much to it. But I thought maybe this would help you make a decision. So to get to the settings menu, we're gonna hold down both dim buttons and then turn the power on. And we'll hold those down for a second, all right? And then we're gonna get a blue screen and we'll wait for that to boot up. So I was looking for units. Uh, there were several to, uh, to choose from. Uh, first one was the Garmin G5 and immediately that got ruled out. That's not approved to be paired with the G1000 for whatever reason, software or something, electronics, I'm not sure why, but we couldn't use that one. Then looked at the Garmin GI275. That unit does more than I really needed it to do. Uh, but the price wasn't bad, 3000 ish 4000 somewhere in there. The problem was the installation. To get all the features out of that unit required a lot of installation labor, a lot of sensors and wiring. Uh, even a modification to the uh, glare shield might have been uh, needed because it, it won't fit for the depth. So I've seen guys who put these in diamonds and they're in the $7,000 range installed, and that was just way more money than I wanted to put into to this unit. It's a backup unit after all. So then I looked at a unit by UAvionics, the AV30. That looked like a pretty nice unit. The price was definitely right, um, but it does not have a magnetometer in it. It uses a directional gyro or some electronic version of that. And I really wanted more accuracy than that. They do make an add-on magnetometer, but it's only approved for experimental aircraft. So that one got ruled out. So that left me with two units from RC Allen. The 2610 is basically just an artificial horizon or attitude indicator. And it's like 2,700 bucks. Uh, but the Mini 6 is a full six pack in a single unit. It was like $3,200. And you get all that extra uh, instrumentation for just that, that little bit of money. So I thought this was the unit I wanted to go with. So we've now gotten into the settings menu. You can see we held the dim buttons down. And this is usually only have to go in here once. So as we go into, we can go to options. So you can turn anything on or off that you want to turn on or have displayed. You can take it down to, to just an attitude and care if that's that's what you want, but I, I left everything on. All right, so that's the first menu option in settings. Is the options next is settings. So every plane has a tilt to the panel and you have to know that. So one of the downsides to the 2610 for me was it has to be factory set to your panel tilt, which I guess it's not a big downside, but it's not changeable. Once you get it from them, it's factory set. My, my panel's a 10 degree tilt. This unit, you can set the panel tilt right in the unit. So any plane you want to put it in, as long as you know your panel tilt, you can set that in. And that just makes sure that the attitude indicator is reading correctly based on how the unit is installed. All right, next is airspeed, color-coded marks. Basically, we're just adding all of our V-speeds in there so the display with the appropriate colors as we're, uh, as we're flying. Back up, next, data units. So we can tell if we want metric or imperial. We're in the US, we use imperial. And then we can uh, reset the battery health. So this does have a uh, built-in backup battery. Uh, should we lose electrical power? Uh, if you dim it down, I think 60%, uh, it'll go about three hours. So that's a nice feature to have. Calibration, this one was important. Uh, altimeter calibration, right there. We can tell it where it's off at the different altitudes. And what we did was calibrate this to the G1000, which has already been certified, it's already been inspected. So all we did was change a few things to make sure that it jives with the G1000. So, that's worked very well. Now, once we got that set, uh, same thing with airspeed. Did the exact same thing. And you can see the, the modifications we did there were very minor. All right, so that's your calibration. All right, flight menu style. We can do normal mode, quick access mode. I believe I've got it in normal mode. And then diagnostics if you needed it. Once you get those set, you never have to go back to this menu unless something, you know, something happens. So what we're gonna do is get out of this now. And this is how the unit appears. Now you can see we're sitting on the ground, so obviously it's not doing anything. But to access, say you want to set a bug or set a barrel, you would simply push this button, and then you can scroll through. There's only a few settings. We've got heading bug, altitude bug. We've got our barrel. Oops, we've got our barrel. You can just go to it, click the button, set what you need, and do that. And then eventually that little uh, menu will disappear. Our last part of the menu, pitch sync. You can set the artificial horizon to anything you want. It doesn't have to be at zero. So say you want to keep a 10 degree climb going. You can set this to 10 degrees. It will move the pitch line. So you just have to line up with that and not see where the 10 degrees is. And then when you get done, you can reset it to zero. Heading type, you need to do magnetic heading or ground track. We have our set to a magnetic heading. It does have a magnetometer in it. So you can see that. And then the last one is the magnetic compensation. 
Uh, when you first get it, you have to fly some circles, uh, three or four circles in each direction so we can get its bearing and, and calibrate. Uh, but once it's, uh, once it's calibrated, it's pretty good. I have found that the magnetometer in the Mini 6 is usually one to two degrees off from what it says in the G1000, but not enough to make a difference. So you can see this unit, even if all the G1000 avionics failed, would be a pretty complete unit to, to fly the plane back home. Uh, installation was pretty easy. I did it myself with my mechanic. He checked everything. It's basically just cutting into a few uh, static lines, uh, a pitot line, and uh, I had to replace the breaker. There is a video uh, I could put a link to this on the whole install. It wasn't bad, it took a few hours. So I've been very happy with the unit. It does everything I want it to do. It's a complete six pack with the battery backup. If I really need it, the G1000 goes off. I can clearly navigate, land, fly, everything with this. So it's been a good unit. And if you've got this old steam gauge six pack, for 3,200 bucks, you can put a digital unit in there and it does a lot of things. Maybe a nice competitor to the, to the Garmin units and maybe a little cheaper and something you could install yourself, of course, with a mechanic helping. So hope this was helpful and we'll see you in the next video.